Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kat. Well, now I'm two weeks postpartum and I want to share with you my whole journey about my pregnancy and my birth story here in the United States. I haven't got my bills yet from the hospital, um, but I will definitely share with you later to just to see how expensive um, the whole kind of having a kid just before birth, I mean right at birth, how much that would cost. But that's for another video. Um, at the same time, since I'm two weeks postpartum, I am kind of going through the kind of the traditional Chinese or Asian ways of postpartum care or postpartum confinement. And I'm going to make another video talking about that and how we say that in Chinese, 坐月子. And I'm gonna do that for about 42 days. So that's kind of six weeks. Typically people do about a month. So I will share with you in another video how I um, do that. But for this video, it's fully focused on my pregnancy and birth story. If you like such content about me talking about how I am a working mom and take care of my new baby Milo, then please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Without further ado, let's get started. So about my pregnancy, um, so it is definitely a planned pregnancy as my other video talked about. So last Christmas and New Year, we went to Miami, Florida, had a trip together with my partner's family. And then we came back early January. And first of all, it was a time uh, for COVID and um, the family was on a cruise. So uh, one family member was a little bit coughing and feel a little bit sick the day we depart from Florida. Um, but at the time I was like, you know, I'm fine. And we flew home and I feel sick the next day. So I did still have some of those COVID tests issued by the government. I did a test and I was positive for COVID. Um, so I was a little bit worried because I, of course I felt sick, but at the same time, because I said it's a planned pregnancy, um, that's also around the time that I would test if I were pregnant. But because I was sick, so I kind of just set aside, I just took a break for a day. Then the next day, um, I was kind of eager to test. And first I used those strip tests um, that I was using to test my hormonal changes during the month anyways. And I had a lot of extra pregnancy strips. So I used um, one to test and it was obviously pregnant. I was a bit shocked because I was like, I'm literally sick right now with COVID. And then of course, I also have those sticks, right? Um, from the grocery store. And I did that uh, by myself and that was positive as well. So I took the stick and I showed it to my partner and he was like, well, that might not be the best response as a future dad. Um, he was like, is that a side effect of COVID? So it was an interesting way to find out that I was pregnant. So right after that, as my MBTI personality test, that I'm definitely a TJ type of person. So I immediately thought about the following steps, right? So it was not really like emotionally excited. It's more like I got to do a lot of things afterwards. I immediately scheduled my OB visits. So at eight weeks, several eight weeks, we went in for the first time um, ultrasound. And um, from the image, it was just like a little bud, you know? And of course you can um, hear the heartbeat, but it was still not real, if you know what I mean. It's more like there's a little bud and then it has the heartbeat. I, at least personally, didn't have very strong feeling at the moment. Well, and then things kind of change at about 12 week ultrasound. At that time, you do see a little human being shape. You know, you see the little heads and then there are like two little um, arm buds and the two like little feet but like legs buds. And it was kind of cute because um, during the ultrasound session, when the tech kind of was scanning the baby um, and he used his little butt arm and moved a little bit, you know, it was very cute at the, at the moment. That's 
what I thought. That was the moment that I thought, you know, I do have a human being growing my body. Um, and before that, we also did a NIPT, which is a non-invasive prenatal test. And, you know, I am a geek on the genetic testing. So I, I went all in for all the tests. Um, at the same time, we found another gender, which both of us wanted to know as soon as possible. So we knew that we are expecting a, a boy and he is all healthy from at least an IPT. Then, you know, if you're not in the United States, you might not really know kind of the doctor visits here. Here is quite simple, I would say, you know, um, I went in at maybe another few times. So only at 22 weeks, I have another ultrasound to kind of screen for all the major defects to make sure the baby is healthy. Um, and another one at 36 weeks to also make sure, you know, the baby's healthy, the estimate weight and everything else. And, and that's for all the ultrasounds. So there's not that many scans. Um, and everything else for the routine checks is also very, very simple. You kind of just go in, let's say every month uh, before your 30 weeks mark. Um, and then, you know, you just talk to OB if you have any questions. For me, it was more like I waited for like 30 minutes, waiting for like five minutes and I'm, I'm out. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. My whole pregnancy was very, very smooth. Um, I, the first trimester typically would have nausea and all those side effects. All I felt was I was very tired. Uh, I felt sleepy all the time. But other than that, um, I was completely fine. The best moments is definitely the second trimester. Uh, you do have a cute belly bump. Uh, you know, you can't have to hold it to, to show people that you are, you're pregnant. Um, but then you also have very good appetite. You know, you eat a lot, you can eat whatever you want because you know, you're pregnant. Um, and it's a, it's a great time for the second trimester. The worst, as you probably know, is the third trimester. For the third trimester, even for me, that I gained 20, 25, less than 25 pounds throughout my pregnancy, uh, I feel really, really heavy especially towards the end of the pregnancy. You have a huge belly. Um, you cannot walk fast at all. You have to walk super, super slow. Okay, I was a fast walker. You know, I love hiking. I love climbing stairs. I love doing those cardio. Um, but the third trimester was a mess. I couldn't do anything. I walked like a turtle. Like I didn't want to move at all. Um, but of course, you know, walking is good for delivery um, and labor as well. But I just didn't have any, um, I just didn't really have any motivation and I, I just didn't want to do anything and I, I didn't want to move, you know. Well, of course, emotionally, luckily, I didn't have any problems, um, but just physically, it was really, really tiring to bear a baby. And on top of all that i felt hot all the time okay so i'm in texas you know we had ac the whole time um typically i feel like oh the ac is too low and i want to increase it versus my partner always feel hot right and he want to turn the fan on and all that <sighs> during my pregnancy it was completely the opposite i was having the fan on i wanted to lower the ac and he was like wearing long sleeves and thinking it was cold. So that was a very interesting thing um, to me because throughout my whole last 30 years, like in winter, I just feel cold in my hands, my feet, but the pregnancy definitely changed that. Even now, like I feel hot all the time, um, but maybe when the hormones kind of goes down, that would go away as well. But yeah, definitely the pregnancy heat is no joke. So my tips for people who are pregnant or wanted to be pregnant is definitely do whatever you want and do whatever you feel comfortable. For example, there are different options for your care, right? So I chose a, a um, OB guy, which is a gyne gynecologist, a very 
you know, classic move for most people. You go to a doctor, you do your checkups. But some of my friends, they chose a midwife or a doula to kind of support them throughout their pregnancy and labor and delivery. So the difference is, well, I didn't really do much research there. I only heard stories from them. So typically, I think midwives or doulas, they are more on a natural delivery birth side. If you want to do a delivery without any intervention, then hiring a midwife or doula would help because they have a lot of techniques to help you go through that, the natural birth. And they might also use a lot of other kind of non-medicine way of supporting your pregnancy, right? Maybe drink different tea or drink different soup and those kind of more dietary changes to support your pregnancy and labor. So to me, I picked a traditional gynecologist that is close to my house, uh, that was referred by my PCP. Um, she was really nice, she was trained very well. And I also didn't really pick the hospital per se. My doctor delivers at a certain hospital and I chose that hospital. But overall, I do think you wanna make sure that the hospital that you chose is good at delivering babies, okay? Because that could vary a lot. You can look at how nice the facility is, how nice the room is, but to me, I think the most important thing is how good the doctors and nurses are. So for example, the hospital that I delivered at was a women's hospital that, that delivers, I think, 20, 30 babies a day. And they have already decades and decades of experience delivering babies. Uh, the nurse that helped me deliver my baby was extremely, extremely helpful. I didn't know um, much about the labor process. I mean, it is my first time. Um, and um, the nurse was really helpful guiding me through every single step, okay? Not just the nurse that actually delivered me, but also the nurse before um, that helped admit me. So now, <laughs> that's a good segue to kind of go to my actual birth story. So what happened was I had a scheduled uh, OB visits on the due day of my baby at 40 weeks. My baby was fine, um, but he didn't want to come out. I was okay that, you know, he stayed extra few days um, in my belly, but that day since I already had the OB visit, so I went in, I did ask for a membrane sweep. At 39 weeks, the nurse did suggest that potentially I could do a membrane sweep at 40 weeks appointment if I hadn't had the baby yet. Um, so that's why at 40 weeks, I asked the doctor that, oh, maybe I could do a membrane sweep. What is a membrane sweep? So it is a process that the doctor goes into your cervical area and separate the membrane between your baby and your cervical wall. And that's um, what we heard can facilitate the labor process. Basically, that was a Friday, Friday morning. I went in for a membrane sweep. And that afternoon, it was that fast. That afternoon, um, around four or five, I did have very, very mild contractions because I was kind of lying on the bed and just, you know, taking a nap. It was not as severe. It was better than your, at least mine, typical menstrual cramp. But because there's emergency line for my doctor's office, so we called in. So the nurse picked it up saying that unless my contractions are really severe or my water break, then we can call them again or go to the hospital. I basically just waited. We still went out and walked the dogs because we have two big dogs. Um, and when we walked the dogs around 8-ish, eight, 8, 8 p.m., ish i already felt the contractions getting worse but it was still okay you know i could walk a little bit and then it would come and i kind of just stopped walking and i keep and i just kept walking so we did a small loop um when we walked the dogs then went, went back home um and then at midnight uh, around like 1 or 2 a.m i was having very bad contractions 
so I woke up uh, my partner and my mom is staying with us as well so we woke up everybody I was like my contractions are really bad um, I have to go to the hospital maybe we can call the nurse again um, and then we called the nurse but nobody picked it up because well, it's midnight so people you know whatever anyway so I was like I'm not gonna wait let's go to the hospital and I was like the worst is we got kicked out <laughs> from the hospital because many of my friends they have contractions they go to the hospital the hospital is like nope you're not ready they kick them out they have to go back home again and wait a few hours or even a day uh, until let's say their water break or some more um, severe contractions then they go back to the hospital in my case i was like yes we live a bit far but we have to go i just cannot handle this anymore so around i guess 2 2 30 don't remember i gathered everybody my mom i was i told my mom that maybe we'll come back i don't know she she actually didn't really pack much um later she told me because she was like you told me that we might come back anyways so we all drove to the hospital and that was you know friday midnight right saturday morning so we had to go to the emergency entrance the nurse kind of put me in the bed i was yelling i was like oh my god my contractions or well, not that crazy but more like it was painful and at the time i just remember all i hoped for was an epidural i just i don't know how people do natural birth it's just so painful the nurse checked me and said oh you're three centimeter dilated i was so happy i was like oh maybe it's time for epidural nope she was like okay because you're first time mom that we really hope that you can push to that four centimeter because sometimes three to four can take hours and i would just stare lying down on the bed i'm like just shut up and give me the epidural but of course i cannot say that because that's what literally what she said we have to wait so i literally maybe waited there for another an hour or two i have no idea i just remember that i had to go to the restroom and then i have my partner on my right side my mom 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 on my left side and like the restroom was literally just across the hall like across a little hallway i have to walk there i don't know maybe it took 10 minutes to just walk there it was like I walked like three steps and like the contraction came. It was just so much fun. I was just in so much pain. And there were like four or five nurses there. They were just staring at me. I don't know. And I was like, ah. Anyway. So after the restroom break, actually, I we came back and the nurse was like, oh, actually, uh, they're ready to admit you. So I was really happy. Then I was I was put on a wheelchair and then we went from the emergency side to the delivery room. And that's when we met the amazing nurse. She basically took a very good care of me. We got epidural right away. Oh my god, thank God. Um and the moment I got epidural, let me tell you, whoever invented the epidural deserves Nobel Prize. Okay. I was in so much pain and then right after that injection all the pain just went away it was such an amazing experience immediately i gained conscious and i was awake i was alive okay i feel like i can i don't know run a marathon or something i was lying on bed i was talking i was laughing i was eating popsicle i was drinking broth i was doing a lot of things I was enjoying the experience. I respect everybody who go through the natural birth, but if you can, I would a hundred, a thousand percent recommend taking that epidural. Okay, girls? Anyway, then it was actually only like 7 a.m. Um, and from then, we're just waiting for me to be more dilated. I took a nap, maybe eight, eight more, took another nap around 2 p.m. ish the nurse came in and say that oh you know let me check oh you're almost ready then maybe at 2 30 we can start pushing i was like oh my god this is a, such a smooth birth experience i can do this everybody can do it you know 
then around 2 30 she was like i probably should gather the team but let me check your vitals again so she was like oh the baby's heart moves a little bit faster than usual oh you're having a fever oh you might have an infection and i was like I thought I'm ready to push. I thought the baby is ready to come out, you know? Nope. Turns out that I have a fever. So then you see two, three people from the lab. They came, they took my blood. They want to check if I'm septic. And I heard sepsis. I'm like, oh my God, oh my diagnostic case back then in consulting kind of came back because I just feel like a septic hospital septic is severe i don't want to be that person you know so the lab came back saying yes i am septic i have infection my white blood counts is high as well then they immediately put me on antibiotics and because of my infection i couldn't deliver the baby i need to have antibiotics for at least two hours before the delivery then i'm just waiting i took another nap because I have to wait for my body to take all the antibiotics in. And the nurse always come back to check my vitals, just making sure um, that I don't have a fever before my delivery. I was even trying to cheat, you know, because she took my temperature under my tongue, which was under 100 Fahrenheit. Basically, that's kind of the mark for feverish uh, for people who use Celsius. And then she took under my armpits and that's when the fever comes in. It's like 101, 102, whatever. So I was trying to cheat the game. I was telling my partner that, oh, maybe get me some ice or cold water. And I just put it in my armpit, right? And then when they measure, then, you know, I will not have fever anymore. But of course, that didn't work. Anyways, after two hours, seems like I'm more stable. Then we deliver the baby. Um... So the nurse initially wanted to wait because my situation, but then she checked on me. She was like, I can see baby's head. He has very black hair. I was like, look at us. I mean, he has to have black hair. Otherwise it's absurd. Then we're actually ready to deliver. Um, then it's another, an hour or two later, the baby Milo was born. So I thought my story would end there, right? I thought, you know, it's a vaginal delivery. I'll be done by tomorrow, which is, which is a very typical um, stay for the hospitals in the US. That if you have a vaginal delivery, you stay in one night in the hospital. And if you have a C-section, then you have two nights. In my case, I was told that I have to stay for two nights because of my infection. So I had to continue having antibiotics and one of the, them you take every 12 hours um, or something. So I just basically have to stay there for two days. Okay, I was like, that's fine. I can stay for two days. Well, the worst is, imagine, I was awake pretty much the day before, right? Friday night, I was having contractions. So I didn't really sleep Friday night. And then 2 a.m. we came to the hospital. The whole time I basically couldn't really sleep. But well, I did take a nap or two here and there, very short. Then we left the delivery room, went to the postpartum room. That was already, I don't know, like 10 p.m. Saturday night. Then because of my infection, the nurse and the lab people have to come every two hours to wake me up take my blood and make sure that my infection is gone, right? Which is good, but I was so exhausted. And they, every time they come, they have to turn all the bright light on that nobody can sleep. So that kept coming until the next day, midday next day. So I basically did not sleep uh, until a month, until until Sunday, around noon, that they say, oh, your, your number went back to normal. And I was just so exhausted. And my whole body, my two arms and my two feet <laughs> had so many holes because I have to take blood that, you know, they couldn't really find spots 
to take my blood from. And a few days later, um, after I was checked out from the hospital, came home, all those places were bruised. It was a brutal experience because of in infection. Well, of course, other than that, my birth story was very, very smooth, comparably. Luckily, the baby was fine because even though he was born with a little bit of fever, because I had a fever when he was born, but the fever was gone uh, right after, thanks to the antibiotics that I took. So of course, thanks to the nurse that caught me that I had a fever, otherwise the baby might be in a critical situation if I didn't take antibiotics. So we're really grateful for the nurse to take care of me and my baby. She was really amazing because I had no idea how to push. She also told me how, you know, how I should push and try all different methods to push, you know, in the TV. All I've seen is people lie on the bed and just push, right? Uh, but this nurse, you know, um, she just tried different ways. She gave me a towel, um, then we did a tug of war uh, that I never thought I would do in a labor room. It was a very interesting experience. And of course, I was in epidural, so I was definitely enjoying all the games that she played with me. Um, finally, you know, I, I only had level one here. It was very mild. Monday, I was walking fine, of course, slowly, but I was walking. And by end of the first week, I was fully recovered. So definitely, I think a good delivery nurse in combined with how your health situation is, vaginal delivery is um, my recommended way of labor. Well, this is a very, very long video, but I do want to share my story to you. So if you have any questions, um, either you are pregnant or you plan to be pregnant or just anything throughout the pregnancy and delivery, if you have any questions, just let me know and hopefully I can address some of those. I was super chill throughout my pregnancy. I was not nervous at all. Um, maybe that also contributed to my smooth or relatively smooth pregnancy and delivery. But anyways, if you have any questions, just let me know, comment below. If you like such contents, thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And I will share more of my stories postpartum in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.